Hello guys, uh, welcome back to my channel based on African Motives, still working on industrial electronics and two uh, part exam papers. In this case, we are going to focus on AC theory from the question paper of August 2021. Um, we were given an uh, RLC circuit, which was shown below, and um, that was question three. So from this circuit, we can analyze, we can see that we have got the resistance, the inductor, the capacitor. We are given the voltage for the resistor, uh, the voltage for the inductor, the voltage for the capacitor. So the question was, determine the total voltage of the circuit. So how are you going to have the total voltage of the circuit? So you have to compare between the voltages we can actually see that uh, our VC is the one that is greater than VL in this case. All right, so I want you to see something here. So we can have this 3.1, so you can see that VC is greater than VL. Having our VC greater than VL, that means our voltage, which is the phase sum, it is going to be the square root of VR squared plus VC, minus VL since it is greater than, but you have to square everything. Okay, so that means we can have our total voltage, which is VT. Uh, that is the square root of VR. We are given 180 squared plus VC, that is 266,6 minus 117,6 for the inductor. So in this case, we can have the total voltage, uh, which we can just use our calculator. So we can just have our calculator. In this case, we need to find uh, the square root of 180. So this is 180 squared plus uh, 266,6 minus 117,6. Everything square it. We are going to have 233,668, uh, which we can have nine here if we round off. So it's going to be 233,66. Uh, that's 669 volts. Okay, so that is the total voltage of the circuit. So we have got 233,669 volts in this uh, supply. All right, so on 3.2, now we are asked to calculate the impedance that is uh, of the circuit. So uh, it depends with the information that you are given. Uh, in this case, we've got the voltage and also on the circuit, we have got uh, the current of 10 amps. So that means we can be able to calculate this impedance. Uh, remember the relationship that voltage is equivalent to current times impedance. Now you want to calculate impedance, so you can just divide by the total current, by the total current both sides, so Z, that's voltage over current. Uh, so the voltage is the one that we obtained of 233,669, then we divide by the current of 10 amps. So this can actually give us the impedance of the circuit. So by dividing by 10, uh, we are going to obtain something like 23,3669 uh, ohms. Uh, remember your impedance is measured in ohms. So to three decimal places, if we are to round off, we are going to have 23,3667 ohms. All right, so that was the total impedance of the given circuit. And 3.3, the value of the resistor, uh, so now you want to know the resistance that is uh, affecting uh, the circuit in this case. Uh, what is the resistance? Take note what we have in this case. We have got a series circuit where we know that current is the same. So the current of 10 amps that we see is the same current that is going to flow. Here we've got 10 amps, we've got 10 amps. Throughout the circuit, we have got 10 amps. So we, we can take advantage of the voltage that we have and the current. Uh, since we know that voltage is equivalent to the product of the two, so that means 3.3, since we know that voltage is actually equivalent to current times resistance. Now you need to calculate the resistor, which is R, so you can divide by current for size. So resistance is voltage over current. 
Uh, that is the voltage of the resistor over the current flowing through the resistor. So the voltage across the resistor that is 180 volts over the total current of 10 amps. So if we are to divide this, we can obtain 18 ohms as uh, the total or as the resistance of the circuit, uh, 3.4 ohm, the value of the capacitor. So the capacitor here, we have got the same thing. On the capacitor, we have got VC and we've got the current. We do not have XC. So if we had XC, it was going to be easier. So that means we can play around to find uh, XC first. Then from there, we can calculate that value of the capacitor. So this is a 3.4. So we can calculate first the value of the inductive, uh, the capacitive reactance, which is our XC. So it's the same thing. We have got voltage and current, so it is going to be VC over the total current. VC, which is 266,6 over the total current of 10 amps, it is going to give us 26,66 uh, ohms. So this is XC measured in ohms. Uh, from XC, we can find, say, since capacitance is equivalent to one over two pi F XC. So that means our capacitance is going to be one over two pi times the frequency, the frequency that we have, which is 50 Hertz times XC, which is uh, the one that we determined or we obtained here, which is 26,66. So once this is uh, there, we can uh, use our calculator to determine the value of the capacitance. So it's one over, 2 pi, which is uh, 2 pi times 50, times 50, times uh, 26 comma 66. And uh, we are going to have 1 comma 1939 times 10 to the power of minus four. We know that capacitance usually is measured in microfarads, which is times 10 to the power minus six. So to convert to microfarads, you multiply by the opposite, which is by 10 to the power of six. So from the answer that we have, we are just going to multiply by 10 to the power of six. That is 119,396. So we are going to have 119,396, which is now in microfarads. By just multiplying by 10 to the power of six, your answer is now automatically in microfarads. So that was it, uh, 3.5. We need the value of the inductor, just like what we had, we need to find L. So it is easier for us if we have got XL because we can find this XL uh, from the formula. XL again is the voltage across the inductor over the total current of which we have that voltage across the inductor. The voltage across the inductor that is uh, 117,6 volts. So we are going to have 117,6 divided by the current, which does not change, which is 10 amps. So XCL is going to be 17,76 ohms. So from XL, we can find XC because we know that XL is equivalent to 2 pi F L. So in order for you to have L, you can divide by 2 pi F both sides divide by two pi F both sides. That means you can have the value of the inductance. So L is equivalent to XL over two pi F. That means we can substitute, we have our XL, which is 11,76 over two pi times the frequency. Uh, the frequency does not change. The frequency is still 50. So that means we can have our inductance from this uh, part. So let's divide from our calculator. If we are to divide these two, we have got 11,76. Everything over two pi, that is uh, two pi times 50, uh, which is going to give us 0, 0,0374. Uh, so it depends with the units. You want to leave it like that, or you want to convert to milli, and is mostly, we can have our, value in uh, milli Henry's. So it depends with uh, the answer way actual, how do we want to write it? So we've got zero comma, uh, that was zero comma zero three seven uh, four three, something like that. So you can leave your answer in Henry's, but 
if you are to convert to milli henrys you must know that milli henrys that is times 10 to the power minus 3 so to convert to milli henrys you multiply by the opposite which is 10 to the power of 3 so from this part uh, if we are to multiply this answer that we got by 10 to the power of 3 it is going to be in milli henrys which is 37,433 so we are going to have 37,433 in milli henrys so that was a uh, uh, the condition of the question you can convert because you are not told the units to use so you can leave it in henrys or you can convert to milli henrys uh, then the other part of the question which is 3.6 was for us to calculate uh, the phase angle that is the phase angle so for the phase angle it depends are you going to work with the resistance and uh, the impedance or you can just have your diagram since we know that uh, this was in terms of xc and uh, xl but we actually know that impedance for impedance it does not change if you work with impedance and resistance that means you're going to apply cost so this is 3.6 we know that uh the cosine of theta is equal to r over z so to find the theta it is going to be at cos r over z which is the impedance so theta is equal to arc cos uh, the resistance from our diagram we have the resistance in this case remember uh, the resistance we calculated our resistance we have the value let's check the value that well we calculated our resistance but this value for the resistance it was 18 ohms we got something like 18 ohms so this is going to be 18 over z which is the total impedance of the circuit from this part here this is our z which is 23,367 so this is the one that we are going to use 23,367 so it's the one that we are going to use to find the angle now so we're going to divide by 23,367. All right, so that is our theta, which is the first angle in this case. So from our calculator, that is shift the cost, shift the cost 18 over 23,367. We can have our value for theta, which is 39,6176, six, which is 39,618 uh, to three decimal places we are going to have 39,618 degrees. So sometimes you might be even asked to draw the, uh, the vector diagram or for the voltages, depending with the question, but this one, it was just for you to calculate the phase angle for the given, uh, for the given diagram or for the given information that we had. So that's what we had guys on our AC theory from this question paper, which is a total of 20 marks uh, just AC theory in an RLC circuit. So that's it, guys, for Mason African Motives working on industrial electronics. And two, till we meet again.